Hey. The title of this week's film was called High Noon. It was released in the year 1952 by the film director named Fred Zinman, whom was born April 29th, 1907, and passed away on March 12th, 1997. During the late 19th century, America was undergoing profound changes. The Reconstruction Era aimed to reintegrate the southern states post-Civil War while addressing civil rights issues. Concurrently, Western expansion was pushing settlers into new territories, often resulting in clashes with Native American tribes. Industrialization was rapidly transforming the nation, with advancements in technology and transportation fueling economic growth. Immigration surged, bringing more cultures to America, but also sparking social tensions. The era was characterized by the legendary Wild West outlaws like Billy the Kid and Jesse James, reflecting the persuasive lawlessness in many areas. High Noon captures the essence of this lawless period where individuals often had to confront danger and moral dilemmas in a rapidly changing society. The central character in High Noon is named Marshall Will Kane. He is portrayed by the actor Gary Cooper. He grapples with a moral dilemma when he learns that outlaw Frank Miller, whom he once arrested, is returning to seek revenge on him by coming into town on the High Noon train. Other characters include Kane's wife, Amy Fowler Kane, who is pray, played by Grace Kelly, who urges him to flee rather than confront Miller, and Deputy Marshal Harvey Pell, who is played by Lloyd Bridges, who initially pledges support but later deserts Kane, Helen Ramirez, who is played by Katie Giretto, who is Kane's former lover, also plays a significant role, as do various town folks, including Martin Hui, who is played by Lon Chaney Jr., uh, Sam Fuller, played by Harry Morgan, and Mayor Jonas Henderson, who is played by Thomas Mitchell. In High Noon, Marshal Will Kane marries Amy and plans to retire, but news arrives that outlaw Frank Miller, whom Kane has sent to prison in the past, is returning on the noon train for revenge. Despite Amy's pleas to leave town, Kane stays to confront the threat. He seeks help from the townspeople, who, but they turn their backs on him. With time running out, Kane faces Miller and his gang alone in a tent showdown on the deserted streets. In the end, Kane emerges victorious, but the film leaves a lingering question about the values of courage and duty in the face of indifference and betrayal. In High Noon, director Fred Zidman employs a meticulous attention to detail in the set design to create a realistic atmosphere. The outdoor settings depict a dusty, sun-drenched western town with rugged buildings and sparse vegetation evoking the frontier era. The actor's clothing reflects the time period with authentic western attire adding to the authentic authenticity. Props such as firearms and horse-drawn carriages further enhance the setting. The use of natural lighting enhances the gritty realism, casting long shadows and emphasizing the harshness of the environment. The cinematography primarily employs an objective perspective, observing the action from outside the character's viewpoints. The camera often maintains a medium to wide shot, recap capturing the events unfolding within the frame. There are moments of dynamic movement as the camera tracks characters moving through the town or positions itself to reveal important details within the scene. However, the overall style emphasizes a sense of detachment, allowing viewers to observe the characters and their surroundings impartially. This approach contributes to the film's tension and allows the audience to interpret the character's action and motivations from a more objective standpoint. High Noon is largely dominated by Gary Cooper's performance as Marshal Will Kane, his portrayal of Kane's internal struggle and moral dilemma anchors the film, conveying the weight of responsibility and courage in the face of danger. Other actors such as Grace Kelly as Amy Fowler Kane and Kate, Katie Giretto as Helen Ramirez also deliver notable performances that complement Cooper's portrayal. The interactions between the actors are characterized by tension, emotion, and conflict, driving the narrative forward and adding depth to the characters' relationships. 
their chemistry and authentic authenticity bring the film's characters and themes to life, contributing to the impact. The editing in High New and Largy follows the events of the story chronologically, maintaining a coherent timeline that builds tension as the narrative unfolds in real time. There are minimal jumps in time, with the film structure emphasizing the urgency of Marshall Kane's situation as he awaits the arrival of the noon train. However, there are occasional flashbacks that provide context to, for Kane's relationships and past encounters. These flashbacks are seamlessly integrated into the narrative, allowing the audience to understand Kane's motivation without disrupting the film's pacing or coherence. In High Noon, the music dialogue and sound effects play pivotal roles in enhancing the film's tension and atmosphere. The iconic score by Dimitri Tomkin featuring the haunting melody, Do Not Forsake Me, O oh Darling, intensifies the sense of impending danger and underscores the emotional stakes of Marshall Kane's predicament. The sparse yet impactful dialogue captures the tense exchanges and moral dilemmas faced by the characters, contributing to the film's realism and depth. Sound effects such as the echoing chimes of the town clock and the thundering of approaching hooves further immense the audience and the dusty, desolate world of High Noon, heightening the suspense and drama. I've never run, I've never run from anybody before, which was said by Kane as he was addressing the townspeople. Kane's declaration reaffirms his resolve and sense of duty, despite the overwhelming odds stacked against him. It underscores his commitment to uphold justice and face his adversaries head on, regardless of the personal risks involved. Looks deserted, which was said as Frank Miller's gang approached town. This line captures the ominous atmosphere as the tension mounts before the impending confrontation. It heightens the sense of foreboding and impending danger, signaling the climax of the film. High Noon was released amidst the McCarthy era, offering a compelling reflection of the political climate of fear and suspicion. Its portrayal of Marshall Kane standing alone against corruption resonated with audiences grappling with questions of loyalty and integrity. At its release, the film was hailed for its powerful commentary on individual courage and societal responsibility. Today, High Noon remains a timeless classic. Its themes of moral dilemma and standing up against injustice continue to resonate. Its value in its ability to provoke reflection on questions of ethics and human nature as relevant today as it was upon its release. High Noon stands as a testament to the power of cinema to explore the complexity of human conditions. Thank you for listening to my wonderful essay.